happens. Okay, five yet. I mean, maybe if I tell them I got food poisoning from the salad aid, they maybe they'll be like, maybe we should look somewhere else to uh, order in on Fridays. Yeah, that might happen. <laughs> yeah. We're right off 41. There's plenty of places off of the main drag. And I'm assuming you're not going to have bumpers? Um, I will hear them. You cannot. Well, and you I can't, can't see me. I can't see you. <laughs> I'll just put them in post. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I will fix it eventually. Mm -hmm. I stopped having a, a life outside of this or something. Mm. Okay, there's steam. There's that. Don't do that. Okay, you. Uh, here. Hello, ASD Woof. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I'm such a mess. Aww, I should put makeup on or something. You picked my Azir fail uh, picture. <laughs> yeah, it was like, well, it was your profile pic, and it was easy mm -hmm. to cut into a nice, fittable size. So. <laughs> it's very cute. Mm hmm. We're going to go and have another uh, photo shoot when it's not August, you know. <laughs> We're going to probably go sometime in November and have a photo shoot with me and Kelly, who's the girl that was my um, uh, my Crowley, mm -hmm. you know, when we're in the long sleeves and not dying would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you see, my husband sent me a good link, I keep finding crappy ones. There's a whole, yeah, I will put the BBC radio one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, this one, if you try to listen on your phone, it goes stupid. Um, there's a whole series of David Tennant reading vampire stories. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've seen I've seen it. I haven't like listened to it, but I kind of like I'm like uh, I'd like to. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'll put it in our show notes somehow. It's too late. Mm -hmm. There. Okay. Well, we'll start whenever. And sorry for our live listeners. But the Jen not being able to be here and me running the show and having to throw it together again at the last minute, Discord, OBS, not getting along. So, I'm the yeah. only moving picture. Let me just paste. We'll have that as one of our Geek Grapevines just because it's fun. All right. I'll give it a couple of seconds of silence and then I'll launch in. Hello, and welcome to episode 146 of Geek Grills. Oh, Geek Grills Pod. seven. Woo. Seven. Start oh, no. again. Didn't fix That's it okay. there. We'll fix it. It's okay. <laughs> Kevin. Oops. Poor dear Kevin. <laughs> We're fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> okay. Take two. We're, we're professionals. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, and welcome to episode 147 of Geek Girls. The Geek Girls podcast is supported primarily by our patrons. You can find us at patreon.com slash grills. I'm Linda, and I'm joined by my co-host September, also known as Nine of Twelve. Greetings. <laughs> <laughs> Spooky. Um, the Jen, unfortunately, is traveling, um, so she wasn't able to join us tonight. tonight. <laughs> I can talk. Um... So it's just going to be me and Ember and me dropping things. So 
What have you been up to this week, Ember? Well, um, it's been a couple of weeks now because we didn't make it last week. Sorry, everyone. But uh, my husband and I have this thing where we go hiking on the weekend and we usually go to brunch. Well, we were kind of broke. So we decided to make brunch. He had this lovely idea. And, you know, I can't just make bacon and eggs like a normal person. I mm -hmm. got out my World of Warcraft cookbook and I made, <laughs> and my Leaves of the Last Home, uh, in the Last Home cookbook. So I made Otic spicy potatoes uh, from the Dragonlance world and I made Conjured Mana Buns from the World of Warcraft cookbook. This is the first time I've made any kind of raised cinnamon bun thing. <laughs> and it was, it was really good. Um, there's a glaze on them that required heavy cream, and I didn't want to go buy it just for that. So I experimented and played with the recipe, and I made, I used coffee creamer. We had, like, pumpkin spice flavor and a right. hazelnut flavor. So I did half and half, and, and it worked. Um, I thought that Rob liked the hazelnuts. I thought it ended up with a weird chemically taste to me, but the pumpkin spice glaze on them was good. So Geeky Brunch was, brunch was fun. Uh, the Balloon Fest happened here. I live in Statesville, North Carolina, and that's a big national balloon festival. And my husband's band played on the second stage. So that was that's fun. Cool. It was a little bit annoying. They gave the whole band two parking passes. So... <laughs> Like, the lead singer took one, and then the drummer, because he had the van full of equipment, took the other one. And Rob and I had to, in order to park for, and not pay for parking, had to drive to another town, to Troutman, park at the fairgrounds, and take a bus shuttle. That's annoying. Right? Oh, I gave. <laughs> one of the organizers is, like, really nice, and I gave him such hell. I'm like, Arnold, are you kidding me? These are grown-ups you're hiring to play an event. This isn't like a bunch of kids and their moms taking them to the gig in the minivan. We, <laughs> they have jobs. Like, we need to be able to park and walk over to the stage. As, and, I'm sorry, I, I won't. I mean, everybody in the band should get, yeah, you're right. Like, yeah. So, I run into him in town since then. And, like, whenever he sees me coming, he kind of backs off a little. <laughs> <laughs> But the bright side, he was like, you know what, though, I'm sorry. He's like, that cooler over there, drink anything you want in it, and you can have it all. And and then we were leaving, and it was, it was you know, beer. Um, not good beer, but it was full of beer. And when we were wrapping up the festival, it started to rain, and everybody was leaving. I was like, taking the rest of that beer home. Okay. Okay. All yours. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's like a, a week later and the drummer, because we were taking the shuttle, like all that beer that I packed up and put in the van is still in the drummer's van because oh. drummers. <laughs> Good drummer. <laughs> yeah. Rob and I went to the Statesville, the Haunted Statesville. It was a walking tour. Mm. I've never done anything like that. It's kind of like I always, I want to do stuff like that, um, but it's touristy but I should know the history of our town in that regard, right? And mm -hmm. it was something to do. We need a little nice date night quality time. It was like 10 bucks and it was almost 90 minutes of walking around town and hearing really cool little uh, ghost stories and just tales of horror, um, some unfounded, some more founded than others. Mm -hmm. But I really liked it. Um, I think I might want to volunteer and run it. Yeah. And actually do that next year, but they'd have to let me go extra. Because <laughs> I don't want to walk around yeah. and like, read out of my book, like, in 1842, blah, blah, blah. Like, no, I want to wear my cloak or at least period garb, and I, I would need to be extra. Yeah. So. I've been I've been on two tours like that in my life. Well, and they were both when I was younger, and I couldn't really stand a lot of horror. Um, like, for the longest time, I didn't know why I was so scared of everything. I figured it out later, but um, my mom really loved like ghost stories and things like that and she would watch like unsolved mysteries and that to this day that theme song gives me chills because i don't i didn't like the narrator <laughs> and like the way that he talked <laughs> but like she loved that kind of stuff so we would compromise as we could go on ghost tours but only during the day so we we did one in like south carolina but it was also like a carriage ride 
So I got to see Ooh. horses, and I, I love horses. They're my like, favorite animal. Um, and then the other one was Savannah, because you had to go to one Savannah, but it was a walking tour during the day. We were talking about that on the trip because mm-hmm. the hostess had been to the uh, Savannah one, and it's such a you know, supposedly haunted city. Mm-hmm. Um, the After the show, I'm going to tell you a story that I heard on the trip that was, or on the tour that was pretty neat. Mm-hmm. So for those of you who want to hear that, stay tuned later. I think that'll be a good uh, after show couple of minutes. Yeah, and yeah. no, <laughs> I did mm-hmm. not play Pokemon. I didn't even open the app. <laughs> it was a little weird walking around downtown for an hour and a half, not playing Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> but I resisted. Stayed out of my phone. Yeah. No. Well, that sounds like. So what'd you do? Uh, uh, I've been doing a lot of crafting. I finished your dragon. Um, I gotta ship him to you. He's uh, he's all set. He's got his little horns and everything. Yeah, um, I needed a picture. I didn't see a picture with the horns. Well, you can see. You can cut anything extra out if you want. And boop. There's well, the face. Well, I can't with the. I'm in the wrong <laughs> thing with the. Okay. Well. Eee. Yeah. There's the face. Okay. <laughs> um, sorry for those of you that can't see me right now. Uh, <laughs> and then um, I also finished my latest commission, which is a life-size parrot, a scarlet macaw to be to be specific. Uh, he's sitting here next to me. Um, that took piratey. a while. Very piratey. I even made him a little like eye patch, but unfortunately, his head is shaped like a real parrot's, and so the eye patch doesn't stay on. <laughs> um, <laughs> if they want it to stay on, I can sew it down, but like right now it's just kind of sitting off to the side. Um, I recorded, a, uh, we re- recorded um, our December episode of Glitter Dice because we're all so busy in November that we can't, we don't have time to get together and record. So we are ahead of schedule. <laughs> Yay, and I was watching Kelly play that unnamed goose game the other day. Oh, yeah, the goose game. I, mm-hmm. I played that for our uh, Extra Life stream. Um, so both of us have played it now, and we're waiting to see if Joey, uh, what Joey thinks of it. Like, it's really hilarious. Um, and then earlier today, um, I was out with my mom at Ikea for her Ikea birthday because she got stuff in the mail that was like, here get free food and get $10 off for your purchase at Ikea. She was like, I want to go have an Ikea birthday. And we're like, okay. So me and her and my dad just had fun going around Ikea. Um, I got some things like towels and things to organize and a court, like a pegboard, not a poster board, a pegboard. Um, (laughs) It's a, it, you know you're an adult when you're excited by organizing things. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm an adult. <laughs> um, yeah, I got another bin for costumes for the Halloween Fairy Project, and I was so excited to be, like, working on the spreadsheet and can't let it be them all. <laughs> like, oh, my sad little life. <laughs> but, yeah, I've been mostly it's that and just being crafty. So <laughs> that's what I've been up to. I'm a lot more tired than I should be. I guess that's probably because I also got food poisoning yesterday and no, Friday. Yesterday Ugh. I was recovering. It was not fun. It was it was mild cuz I've had really bad food poisoning before and it was not that, but it was still not fun. Um so that's probably why I'm a little food a chip little blend. tired. <laughs> but I think that's uh that's us caught up Caught up right now, so we can move on to the Geek Grapevine. Let's see what we've got here. So I was really happy to Ooh. find this story. Because um, <laughs> we know that you know, like dysfunctional gaming or gaming addiction has been added to... <coughs> Whoops. Sorry. We're both dropping things tonight. <laughs> mental health uh, lexicon uh, recently, and it, it justifies a lot of... You know, the same kind of satanic panic that games get for uh, video games. But according to research conducted by Oxford University in partnership with Cardiff, there's nothing clinically wrong with obsessive gamers. Rather than being negatively impacted by gaming itself, it is suggested that long pe- young people who engage in dysfunctional gaming may be doing a bid, doing so in a bid to escape underlying frustrations and wider psychosocial functioning issues. 
uh, duh. I mean, I really, (laughs) knowing and being part of the gaming community for so many years and having children and seeing them um, deal with their own, you know, social pressures in real life versus online and the difference in those relationships, meeting people all over the world through games like World of Warcraft and online people like other podcasters who have a certain amount of social anxiety and I feel like the same way that things like tabletop gaming can help you break out of your shell you're creating a character and it lets you learn how to express yourself and and be who you want to be and learn who that is i very much feel like video games can be that kind of format now of course you would have to be careful if they're dysfunctionally gaming um, and becoming addicted that there's a tilt there but i think it can be a useful tool and I was worried that when they put the addiction in the lexicon that it would be just written off as, you know, a bad thing. But they collected and analyzed data from a thousand adolescents and an equal number of caregivers. And they completed, you know, questionnaires and the caregivers rated the child's emotional and social health. And these kids play game daily and about half the daily players reported symptoms of obsessive gaming and daily players spent an average of three hours gaming each day. However, the study um, really noticed variations in gaming experience being linked to their adolescents' basic psychological needs for competence, autonomy, and social belonging, and whether they were being met in real life or if they were you know, filling that in with the game. Mm-hmm. So anyway, fantastic. That's cool. <laughs> well, it's, it's- it's neat when they start doing, you know, science to um, and, and studying this kind of thing. Yeah, so, instead of yeah. adding to the stigma, mm-hmm. you know, just doing more studies instead of just letting the World Health Organization just <laughs> make the call. And now all gamers are freaks in the basement again. Let's not do that. Yeah. Oh. So what um, do you got? Well, I... I was, I have this, I, I do want to do the um, the one I found, which was, you know, best movies set during Halloween, because this is kind of our, our spooky um, one, it's right before Halloween, um, and so we will do that, but I, um, I almost forgot, and I don't know how I almost forgot, uh, today, um, one of the YouTubers that I'm subscribed to, Jack Septicai, did a big... Uh, charity live stream for um, the Arbor, I think it's the Arbor Day Foundation. Um, let me get, yeah. Um, <laughs> where they're doing, um, it's, it's hashtag Team Trees. And what they're doing is a bunch of YouTube creators are all collabing this to raise $20 million total because each dollar it, you, plants a tree. So they want to plant 20 million trees by 2020. So his, oh, his was nice. his was the start of it. Um, and well, I watched about five hours while I was crocheting away. I watched about five hours of his stream. Um, and he his goal was $150,000. And he had reached 120 by the time I stopped watching. Because I had to go, you know, go see my parents. Um, but I, I think he hit his goal. So that's 150,000 trees already. Um, wow, I know that's that, fantastic. That's so cool. We'll definitely yeah, put the link in our show notes on our website. Yeah, I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to find the... Uh, I'll, I'll get the Arbor Day um, actual uh, thing here. <laughs> thing. I'll get the Arbor Day thing. It's called a website. So there's that. <laughs> um, and then the other, the, the kind of uh, fun one I got is the uh, best movies that take place at Halloween. Um, there are some of the ones, there's some ones that I've heard of and some that I haven't heard of. So there's Night of Demons, Hocus Pocus, um, I'd never heard of Boys in the Trees, but apparently it's a really good one. Yeah, I had not <laughs> heard of that one either. There's a couple here I hadn't heard of. 
it, it's I, it looks like it's an Aussie indie movie, so I I'm not surprised ah. that I. Yeah, Halloween a three. To find yeah, Halloween three, season of the witch, murder party, which I actually have seen, which is strangely enough, <laughs> it's a horror comedy. Um, my a group of my friends really really love horror movies, and so. For a while, we were going over to their house like every Friday just to hang out. And almost every Friday, they would just pick a horror movie and watch it. So, um, Murder Party was one of them. So, 2007 horror comedy. <laughs> it's a pretty good one. Um, Hollywood Nights uh, is one that was apparently set on Halloween. In Yeah, set on Halloween night. Um... Neo Maniacs, which is not one I've heard of. Ernest Scared Stupid, which is one I have heard of. Um, <laughs> <laughs> There's just a bunch. The Crow. I watched that ages ago. I love The Crow. Of course, yeah. I'm old, so I also read the graphic novel like when it first came out. <laughs> and then another horror comedy called Gravy, which is not one I'd heard of, but it apparently follows uh, cannibals. Like... The story of cannibals, and I'm like, well, I don't think that's one I would appreciate, so, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that's, I just thought it was a little fun kind of thing, because we're, you know, right before Halloween. Yeah. Are there any, and Hocus Pocus, obviously, is like, that, that's that got to be the, the favorite among all of this whole list. Um. We were watching some spooky stuff. We went back and watched American Horror Story Hotel, um, mm -hmm. you know, just to be in season. But then we fell off and we watched, oh, what was, well, we were watching Neon uh, Evangelion finally. <laughs> so, not spooky, but it's an anime that was <laughs> recommended to us, I don't know, 15 years ago or some shit that we're finally getting around to. Um, Evangelion is just depressing. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> oh, I like I like sad things. Actually, the other one we watched was Your Name. Oh, that's such a good one. I love. It's really? Oh. oh I got so I got it all. Oh. Yeah. It's in so my feels like it, on that one. It's so sweet and heart wrenching at the same time. Yeah, my so, um. 18-year-old rec actually recommended that to me, like, last year, and I have loved, he's such a, like, 18-year-old dude, right? <laughs> Game and scream and troll in games, and, you know, he could be so toxic on purpose and thinks it's funny. And then he recommends anime to me, and he's all into these, like, beautiful, heart-wrenching stories that I end up crying and <laughs> yeah uh do rec I do recommend uh for our listeners your name um it not only is it a really 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 cool story but it's beautiful it's beautifully it is. The animated art is out of this world fantastic so do recommend um and it's funny like it, it's really kind of heartwarming and funny as well so. Yeah, and and the funny <laughs> bits aren't that like standard anime like just stuff shooting out of their eyes, you know. No, 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 no. <laughs> um. Yeah, like my friend was like, "I want to tell you the premise, but it's gonna make it sound creepy, and it's not creepy at all. I promise." Right. No. <laughs> it was just so funny. Um. But yeah, do recommend. Um. So I think that's what we've got uh, for the grapevine. And I took a mm -hmm. slight tangent, tangent there to, to do the Arbor Day thing. Um, so now our our main topic, again, because uh, it is spooky, spooky time, um, we have decided to discuss uh, the evolution of the vampire. So basically, I've got a couple of um, links here. I was watching the video. I really liked the video from OSP that you linked. Yes. Um, OSP is a short for Overly Sarcastic Productions. They are a YouTube channel that um, I adore. Um, they have uh, their two 
main people are Red, who is the girl, and Blue, who is the boy. Um, Red does, uh, like, stories and myths, and Blue does history. So, um, she basically uh, breaks down Dracula and why it is the kind of classic that it is. Um, and the reason that um, I, I linked that is because Dracula was kind of the turning point for like the vampire image when vampires kind of became characters. They became things that could be developed into characters rather than what they were before, which was just kind of creeping horror. Yeah, um, there was that unholy, undead, just scary monster, and then Bram Stoker's Dracula inserted the seductive female vampires, mm -hmm. um, the story of Dracula, like, well, they moving injected, to England and, yeah, giving it character it, and depth. It, it injected a measure of humanity to the vampire itself, so even though it was, it, the vampire, you know, Dracula is the the villain he had a measure of a measure of something you could relate to and the the as she she puts it very well in the video is that it gave them character and characters can be developed so that's where kind of that <laughs> um uh, that's why i put that in there but Vampire, like, as a concept, um, came from a very old tradition of, um, it wasn't even, like, people that rose up to feed off of blood. It was just these spirits that fed off of their living relatives to, like, as, like, a curse, Vampirism was a curse at first. It wasn't like a a person. Um, let me see if I can find down here. <laughs> okay. So it starts like way back in the ancient cultures of Oh, there's Mesopotamia. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Greeks, yeah, Romans, There's there were, like, demons and spirits that were, like, precursors. Um, and it wasn't really until, um, like, right before the Victorian era, like, the 18th century, that those ideas kind of, like, became con concrete enough to be put into their own like box like this is what a vampire is um and actually strangely enough even though a lot of folks think vampire and they're like oh dracula transylvania they the idea uh, of the way that it solidified started in america actually and um that's also why i linked the first episode of lore because um the story that he tells about the family, um, this poor family, <laughs> this, this guy, his wife dies to tuberculosis and then one by one, his children start dying to tuberculosis. But like, he's either like, he's immune or he has some sort of like immunity to it. Mm -hmm. Like just whole family, almost his whole family dies to tuberculosis. And it's so bad that he, he himself is not quite convinced, but his neighbors start thinking that it's this evil spirit that has taken over the bodies of his wife and dead children that are feeding off of his living children and slowly killing them. And it was this story that eventually made its way over to Bram Stoker that he incorporated into Dracula. Well, there's a whole lot of different origins of different sorts of vampires. Um, mm -hmm. The Asian ones, I always thought that were, like, those are the most horrifying. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> women's heads detach with entrails and they keep them in jars. Like, holy shit. Leave it to the Asian culture <laughs> to just keep the monster in their vampires, right? 
Ooh. Yeah, of course. Um, I read a book some years ago that was really fabulous. It was called The Romeo Error. Mm -hmm. And that looks at another origin. Uh, well, it's not the point of the book. The boy, the book is it's kind of dry because <laughs> it's examining the difference between death and goth. Mm -hmm. So it does look at early misunderstanding of decomposition. Like right. they would dig up corpses, and some were not very decomposed, and some were more decomposed. And they would look at this as evidence of vampire. Um, well, and they, testing and... for death and like burying people, and then like they're screaming and trying mm -hmm. to get out. Um, things like that, and so knowing the difference between death, which is you know the body, you know, like your heart stops and whatever, but then sometimes you people come back, their heart starts or whatever. If mm -hmm. they're not decomposing, you can't be sure they're dead yet, and that's the process of goth when the cells start to actually break down. So it was really neat, but it like kind of and it was so dry textbooky, except it also. Mm -hmm kind of gave me nightmares because i not that being buried alive thing i've got a little poe-esque yeah, thing yeah, there yeah, yeah no, no <laughs> and hearing about how many times that used to happen and yeah, well, yeah that was actually, another origin they like if you go into the like the history of of it's gonna sound very morbid but the the history of like mortuary and and people that like cared for those that had died like in the middle, I think it was um, in, in the Middle Ages, they actually had like, um, or it may have been later than that, but they had a, uh, a room, a, a, like a hovel, or not a hovel, but like a, a house where, th it must have been later on in the century, but they, they had these houses where these caretakers, you would lay out the body um, and then you would leave it there just in case they woke up. So you had these caretakers that are going around and stabbing these corpses with pins in their feet to make sure they are actually dead. And then they had a set number of days or until it started to decompose and then they felt okay to bury them. Whereas, you know, there's, there's also when they when they did suspect someone of being a vampire and they were able to like exhume them you know bodies when bodies decompose weird shit happens okay but they didn't understand that at the time mm -hmm. so um depending on what time of year it was like if it was cold the body may not have decomposed as much um i think with the the story of of the gentleman whose family like his neighbors thought that he, he was being um they were being haunted by a vampire. Like, they dug up his daughter. It was either his daughter or his wife. And she actually had, like, fresh blood. It looked like fresh blood in her mouth. But that's just... That was just the body decomposing. But they didn't understand that. Right. So all it did was feed into the folklore um, and the stories that, that were surrounding the this creature... And people thought they existed. I mean, I'm sure people still think they exist, but like it was, it was a, a widely held belief that these creatures were real, and there were certain ways uh, and things that you had to do to keep yourself safe and to make sure that your family members did not turn into a restless dead when they <laughs> were buried. Like you know, putting a stake through their heart, yeah. a holly stake. A literal stake of holly to like keep them down and there was there was ways to like you could take i forget what it is but you you were supposed to like take off their feet or something and like cross bones across them there's a lot of weird <laughs> well it's interesting how it keeps it kept alive this mythology like it just keeps being reborn it seems so mutable compared to oh damn it mm -hmm. i'm gonna pick up my recyclables um, a lot of monsters are, are static. They have one story, right? Um, mm -hmm. Doctors recommending drinking blood for people with porphyria. Mm -hmm. um, mass hysteria. That's a big one. Another interesting story I read. And vampires and werewolves have been lent to with that kind of, like, a mass hysteria being fed by, oops, there was ergot in the bread, and everyone's tripping. 
Mm -hmm. And they start, like, hanging people and staking people and shit because they're undead. <laughs> yeah. And then the people, I mean, you could be a, having a bad trip and think, oh, no, a cat jumped over me while I was sleeping, and now I must be a vampire and I have to go drink people's blood. I mean, sounds <laughs> nuts, but people mm -hmm. do crazy things, and it just feeds into this legend of something people have already heard about. They've been told stories about. And what what do you think of the um, uh, Bram Stoker's uh, interpretation? Um, put out a lot of the what we think of now as you know the the traditional vampire powers, mm -hmm. but there was also um, other things in there as well. What do you think of those? Like, I re I thought the the fresh rose stalk across the coffin to keep him inside the coffin was really cool. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so that. And I like not, that kind of thing, what, and and the yeah. running water. Mm -hmm. Can't um, cross running water. Is interesting to me too. I find it more believable in the mythology than something like, although you know I'm not that audience. Something like a, a crucifix, because that would it would seem to dep be dependent on what the creature. Yeah, well, I believe, actually read, like I don't know. <laughs> I I actually read a story, and this was years and years ago. I can't remember what this short story was called but it was a, a short story about these folks that basically they lived in a world where they were the ones that uh, were uh, the, the they weren't even hunters they were just trying the protectors to keep people safe from like vampires and other creatures of the night but mm -hmm. one of them uh one of them was a uh a, was jewish and um he like in the story, he he held such belief that um, his uh, star of David glowed, and he like yelled at a creature to to you know be gone, and, and it piffed, and everybody was like, "Did you tell that? Did you just tell him to go to hell?" And he was like, "Okay, first of all, Jewish don't believe in hell, and secondly, <laughs> <laughs> my belief was strong. That is what saved me." So it's it was interesting because this particular writer was like it's not about what religion it is it's if you believe in it enough to protect you and which that's I thought, interesting yeah and i could i could buy into that because the whole microcosm macrocosm of when you're enacting anything spiritual or magical it's it's your f faith and strength that it is rooted in um mm -hmm. i think the vampire romantic aspect so taking over and being glorified and romanticized all these years it boils down to a very simple the love and death connection mm -hmm. right that's something that many philosophers have written a lot of stuff about over the years yeah. but like love and suffering and grief and then immortality being some kind of way to resurrect from that like other monsters don't have that appeal right mm -hmm. of, of escaping your fear of death and being given that yeah they, they i've never found it particularly appealing i don't want to live forever <laughs> that sounds terrible well they, they actually <laughs> went they went more into that uh specifically in the dracula story um a few years ago they they did a um I don't even want to call it a remake because it wasn't really. It was a it was a TV um, series that only got one season. That was uh, I think it was called Dracula, um, but it was it was based off of the book. And they go into the fact that um, Vlad uh, Dracula was Vlad Tepes. That they they're like, nope, this was him. Um, in that TV series, and that mm. he had a wife, and his wife was killed, and then uh, the Mina Harker character was reincarnated as like she was re that his that's his wife reincarnated, and like they really kind of lean it in, lean into that like um, love versus immortality versus you know what do you re you don't remember obviously because it was a past life kind of thing so yeah and that's just another kind of like i guess evolution of that that particular story but like vampires in in general is you know if you're immortal 
do you search for the one you lost over and over again or do you move on or do you become a monster that kind of thing it, it's an it's interesting concept that they've you know that um writers and storytellers have gone into it's it's just it's another aspect of of how the the original you know creature <laughs> has changed over the years into something that is more relatable oh yeah and i think western culture has done a particularly <laughs> stellar job at just yeah. the romanticizing of of the vampire it's kind of i I'm convinced that a lot of uh, the West, a lot of Western culture, are danger sexuals. Um, <laughs> they, they like anything that might hurt them, that might kill them. <laughs> yeah. I it's know. like, oh, it's gonna hurt everybody else except me. I'm the exception. It's like, mm, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, you're not. You, you you don't get an exception. That's not how monsters work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's nice to think about and and I think that's another thing with vampires. They get a pass on that. Because, you know, if you get them to turn you, then you're also immortal. Mm. Mm. Oh, sorry, I'm I'm going through the Wikipedia article again. Just because mm -hmm. I, I find it fascinating. Um there was there was a way to identify there's ways ways to identify a vampire back in the day. Um one was to find the vampire's grave. Oh no! One method of finding a vampire's grave uh, involved leading um, a virgin boy through a graveyard or church grounds on a virgin stallion. The horse would supposedly balk at the grave in question, and a, it was generally a black horse was required. <laughs> Although in Albania it should be white. <laughs> Except if you're in Albania. Albania, you need a white stallion. Of course. Yeah. And then holes appearing in the earth over a grave were taken as a sign of vampirism. Or, you know, gophers. Gophers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I can't, I, I shouldn't make fun, I shouldn't poke fun too much. I mean, these were times when folks didn't have, like, the education and the knowledge that we have nowadays. And a lot of the times, they all they knew was... The world the, the world they lived in you know and oh but sometimes these were hucksters sometimes they were hucksters. you could yeah. totally be that snake oil salesman <laughs> yeah well you know i have this white horse and you wear your cloak mm -hmm. and you wave your arms around and you pull out your fancy wooden box full of implements and everyone believes you're an expert oh uh, have you seen the old uh, vampire hunting kits have you seen the old vampire hunting kits they no. Exist. It's no. it's fun. They I actually do have an like an old last rights kits kit actually there, though. There's one that I've seen um let's see if I can find the link to it. But oh wait, like no, I take that back. I did see one of the oddities and curiosities show I went to. Mm hmm Or it's it's like there was there was steaks and there was like vials to hold holy water. Holy water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh gosh. Um and then I also thought it was interesting that, um, do, do, do. You know, in the Balkan Dampier thing? Yeah. That those, they came, obviously they came later, but, uh, Dampiers are supposed to be, like, half human, half vampire. So, obviously, Somebody was writing fan fiction way early. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. uh, Albania again. Albania. Great place for vampires, apparently. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, I will, as always, folks, link all of these sources in our notes. Yes. So, it's, yeah. It's just, we... it's very interesting to me. I, I love, I love the old folklore and, and how it changes over time. Yeah, and I think vampires is one of the most, the most storied, the most rebirthed, <laughs> uh, <laughs> of any of the classic monsters. I mm -hmm. mean, most of the other ones are just retelling the same story over and over, but there's been a definite, definite evolution in vampire lore. Yeah. 
and modernize just... it, and now they sparkle and shit. Uh, uh. That story doesn't exist. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's just so interesting because there's there there are stories of vampire or at least vampire like creatures all over. There's there's ones from Africa, there's Asia, mm -hmm. and. The one I was well, the concept about... of taking one thing and like putting it into another mm -hmm. to give it life, I mean, seems pretty basic. I mean, from watering plants, right? From filling mm -hmm. jugs. Like, I could see where there's a core human thing that you could be filled back up. And then, you know, if you bleed, I mean, mm -hmm. they used to bleed people to get illnesses out of them, and then they tried, somebody reversed it and started doing transfusions, and mm -hmm. sometimes it would kill people, and sometimes it would be miraculous. Yeah. They and didn't it, understand. That's the one thing about, and uh, OSP goes into this in her video, of, mm -hmm. um, that's one thing in, in Dracula you just kind of have to hand wave, is that there are blood transfusions everywhere, because that was the new science. Mm-hmm. Um, and they didn't understand how it worked, but it all worked out in Dracula, so it's fine. <laughs> they all held the They're same. They're all really blood lucky. Type. They all had the same blood type. Really. Um, but I, here it is the um, the case I was talking about about in the Americas that got back to Bram Stoker and, and helped with his uh, his novel, um, Mercy Brown. Uh, she they were in Rhode Island in 1892. Um, she, after her mother, she died of tuberculosis, and then her brother started to get sick. Um, it may have been a, a year or so later, maybe less than that. Uh, no, it was less than that, because um, it says two months. So her brother got sick. They thought she was coming back to feed off of him, or mm -hmm. somebody convinced her father of that fact. Uh, they took her out of the tomb cut out her heart, burned it to ashes, uh, and then what they don't tell you in the Wikipedia article, but I know from my own uh, hearing of the story, is they made the ashes into a tonic, and they made her brother drink it, because they thought that would cure him. Sure, why not? Yep. <laughs> That's how I feel about all homeopathic medicine right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's like early homeopathy. Yep, they thought it would help. <laughs> Put it, a little of this in you. It'll be fine. Spoilers, spoilers, it did not. Um, <laughs> but they were trying their best. Uh, so. <laughs> with that. With that, uh, if if y'all have any thoughts about, you know, vampires, you like them, you hate them, um, you wish they went back to the, uh, the old monsters of horror rather than the uh, sparkly bad boys that you want to date, uh, you can chime in by emailing us at geekgrills at gmail.com, um, or you can also tweet us at geekgrills. So, Ember, what are you most anticipating right now? Taking the costumes to the shelter tomorrow. Yay! Yay! I exceeded <laughs> my goal. I had to buy a new bin. Um, I am. They give me back what they don't use each year. I've got people on board to pick up stuff on clearance, so I'm going to be researching another facility to add next year. Yay. I'm feeling very confident that I can add another, a third facility to my annual Halloween Fairy Project. And I am just over the moon about that. It going so well. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, so cool. uh, trying to pull my own costume together, that's mm. going to be kind of figuring out Harley from the shit I got in my house right now. But <laughs> 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 And how about you? I have a Halloween concert coming up on, we're doing it on Tuesday rather than um, actually on Thursday because we want everyone to come to the concert and then, you know, on Thursday they can go out and do their trick-or-treating. Um, but we are all uh, dressing up, so I'm going to be dressing up as a dragon, um, so that should be fun. Uh, and then the other thing I'm doing is making Christmas, making Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> la, la, la. Uh, because I gotta, it's I gotta this time. do do with the making of the Christmas presents and uh, get started with that so they can all be done before uh, before I have to stress about it. 
So there's that. <laughs> it is good to get a jump on that. I mm -hmm. should follow your lead. <laughs> So remember, folks, you can always come watch us record live at twitch.tv slash geekgrills on Sunday evenings. Our next one will be on November 3rd, hopefully at 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. In addition to the subs and bits we get on Twitch, we are supported by our amazing patrons, greatest girlfriends on the Internet. You can be become a patron today at patreon.com slash grills and don't forget if you have amazon prime you can sub to us for free every month on twitch and another way to show your support is by leaving us a review you can do so on any of your podcast catchers leaving your reviews free and they help our ranking which can help other people find our podcast also you can join our facebook page and follow us on twitter if you'd like to help spread the word so where can we find you on the interwebs i can be reached at nine of twelve on twitter and twitch and on the heresy and hearsay podcast you can also listen to me talk about women in gaming on the Glitter Dice podcast, and you can find me on Twitch under the name True Noob. That's T R U N zero zero B, and you can find the Jen at the Jen says on Twitter, streaming on Twitch TV slash. I think it's just the Jen right now, isn't it? It's not the Jen plays anymore. No, it's just the Jen now. Just the Jen. We need to tell her to fix that. Uh, <laughs> on Twitch TV slash the Jen, and find everything she does at the Jen says dot com because she owns it. And don't forget to check out America's Next Top Podcaster. As far as I can tell, she's st still in. I'm an episode of Behind, and there's a double elimination in that one. But let's cross our fingers. I think she would have told us if she got eliminated. <laughs> so please I mean, go give them a listen. I mean, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Thanks, Thanks for, listening, for listening, everyone. Good game. Good game. GG. Yee. Ta-da. Okay, so the cool story. Cool story. <laughs> that happened in the Haunted Tour. Um, there's a story, a very, very, a local story about Tom Dooley. Do you ever hear the legend of Tom Dooley? I've you maybe heard, heard the song. Like, go I've ahead, heard the hang song. your head, yes. Tom Dooley. Yeah. So yes. that happened here. Ah. Uh, he was hung here. It, the crime took place in a different county, but he was hung here. He was from here. And I saw a play about it last year and this and that. And so we're walking around downtown and we get another piece of the story I had never heard that was interesting. Now, you remember me telling you about that kitten that mm -hmm. we were trying to rescue and trying to rescue and we got a humane trap <laughs> and we finally got it. And I was trying to get it from the trap to the carrier and it ran out in the street and got hit. Mm-hmm. So, horrible story, right? Then we're on this haunted ghost tour right there where that happened. Like, right on that corner in front of that restaurant. And we hear about... At, the whole Tom Dooley story was he went away to war and he was in love with Laura Foster. And he uh, came back and she had married someone else. And then he and she ended up carrying on anyway, uh, even though he was you know, married to somebody else and this and that. So anyway, eventually, uh, Laura Foster is killed. Or wait, no. Am I mixing up the names? Anyway, <laughs> so one of the women gets killed. Oh no, Mary was the one he loved. Laura Foster is one, whatever. So, the woman, he, what it looked like is he and this woman, who was somebody else's husband, or somebody else's wife, mm -hmm. killed Laura Foster. To kind of get her out of the way so they could be together. And then her body was found, and Mary and Tom were both arrested and accused of this murder. And... You know, time went on, and then he was convicted and hanged. And as, like, in his last parting uh, written confession, he was like, I and I alone murdered Laura Foster. She, This other woman, Mary, had nothing to do with it. Um, he exonerated her, so she never had to be put on trial for this murder, even though it seemed incredibly evident that she was involved in this murder. Mm -hmm. But he was throwing himself under the bus, or onto the rope, to spare her. <laughs> so all that goes on. He's hanged. And soon after, 
over right in this neighborhood, uh, that woman's carriage turned over and she was crushed by it and killed. And the story is that if you see a cat wandering around over in that area, you're supposed to leave it alone. It is her soul trying to get back in and trying to get to you. Yeah. <laughs> so with the whole carriage crushing and it was, we were standing right there where this thing happened, where I was trying to save that cat and it got hit by a car was like, Oh my God, holy shit. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I have to tell Erin, like my friend who was helping me catch the cat and got the trap for us and they're like, I have to tell her this right away. And she's like, okay, well good. That makes more sense now. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah, that was neat. <laughs> All right, I'm going to raid. I'm not going to raid. We have three people. Sorry, guys. Mm -hmm go see somebody else cool <laughs> but all right uh we will i guess talk on discord about what we will cover next week mm -hmm. did we ever pick a book because i remember i added some to our spreadsheet but i don't think we ever made the roll um somebody can roll a die i guess <laughs> yeah we should maybe do that we could yeah. do it as part of the show next week maybe. yeah well, thank you very much, and I look forward to the dragon. And bye, yeah, everybody awesome. who came in. Bye.